Okay, so today we're going to be talking about um, lesson five, and that's about the midpoint. Um, we are only going to do um, one page of notes today, so we are actually looking at page 15, um, and this is going to be day one of midpoint. So first things first is we need to actually talk about what the midpoint is. So this first thing here is going to be midpoint. And it's kind of just the way it sounds. It's the middle point, okay? So a point that divides the segment into two equal parts. So if we had this line segment for what we see, if we had this line segment and we label this A, B, so we'd say line segment A, B, um, it says... Well, I'm sorry. Let's not label that AB. Let's label it AC. And the reason I say that is because it says what we say, B is the midpoint. So if B is over here, that wouldn't have been the midpoint. So that's why I changed that to C. So what we want to do is we can say, well, this is AC and B is the midpoint. And, and that might not be exactly the middle, but it's pretty close. Um, so all it is is the middle point in between A and C. So if B is the midpoint, so AB is equal to BC. What that means is that since it's dividing it into two equal parts, segment AB, which is represented by this little tick mark, is congruent to segment um, BC, which is represented by another tick mark. So what those tick marks mean is that those two segments are congruent. They're equal. Okay. I don't know if we've actually talked about the congruency symbol, but this congruent, this symbol right here is our congruency symbol. So it looks like an equal sign with a squiggle on top. Okay. So we can also say that segment AB is congruent to segment BC. And we say segment by putting that, um, that line at the top or that segment at the top. Okay. So then we wanna find the midpoint of each segment. So we wanna find the middle. Now, the issue here is that we have a point A at 5 on our number line, and we have a point B at 17 on our number line. So really, we have to figure out how to do this. Um, we can say, well, the middle looks like it's like right here, which it does. Um, but we can actually figure it out in different ways. Okay, so if I want to count... I can say, well, from here, that's one segment, or one unit, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So to get from 5 to 17, I went 12 units, okay? Then you can say, okay, well, since I went 12 units, what's half of 12? Because I want to find that middle point. So half of 12 is 6. So I'm going to say, well, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my middle point is going to be right there. Okay, and it says, well, what is the coordinate of that midpoint? So if I'm here at 5, I go 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now, some of you might have already found an easier way to do that. And I can agree, I can't agree with you more. Use the easiest way if you have an easier way to do that. So the easier way that some people might be using is saying, okay, well, this time I don't have tick marks to use. So I can't just count the space in between these two. So I'm going to say, well, if I'm at negative four, I'm going to be at 9 because I want to find the midpoint of CD. So C is negative 4, D is 9. I'm going to add those two together. And since we're finding the middle, we divided up here. Whenever we were looking at um, this first one here, 
We divide it by two because we're finding the middle. We're splitting it into two equal parts. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to divide that by two. Okay. So I have negative four plus nine. Which, oh, shoot. Which gives me five over two. Now, we can leave it as five over two as a fraction, which is perfectly fine, but I know a lot of you do not like fractions. Um, so you can also convert that to a decimal. So five divided by two is gonna be 2.5. Now, either way, um, either way works for me. It does not specify in the directions, so um, you can use either one. Okay, moving on to number two. So this time it says find the midpoint of each segment. So if I'm at HA, so I'm gonna go ahead and label this on my graph. I'm gonna use my graph on the, on the right. Okay, so H is at zero, zero. And A is at six, zero. So it says, okay, we'll find the middle of those two. So in this case, it might be easier just to count. We can say, well, one, two, three, four, five, six units. H, A is six units. Half of that is three. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to count from H, one, two, three. And my middle point is going to be at this coordinate, three comma zero. Okay. Then it says, well, for part B, we want to find the midpoint of HP. So H is still at zero, zero. P this time is at zero comma four, okay? I'm gonna count the units in between H and P. We have one, two, three, four units. I can divide that by two because I wanna know half of four is two. So I'm gonna count two units, one, two, and that's gonna be my middle point. So that's at zero comma two. Those are pretty easy, um, just because you could definitely just count. Um, some of you might have even been able to see it. But now for part C, it's saying, well, let's go in between P and A. Here's the issue. That's not a horizontal line, and that's not a vertical line. So we can guess that the middle is going to be somewhere around here, but we don't know that for sure. Okay, so there's actually a formula that we can use to find midpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and skip down here to the midpoint formula and write this in. Our midpoint formula is x1 plus x2, all of that over 2. And then your next coordinate is y1 plus y2, all of that over 2. Okay. So we're going to use that formula so that we're not just guessing that the middle's right there. We're not just hoping that's correct. Okay, because we can't really count. We can't say, well, that's one unit. We don't really know that. Then that's another unit. We don't really know that. Okay, so I'm going to label my points A and P. And I'm going to say, well, our x coordinate always comes first. So I'm going to say x1. And our y coordinate comes second. So y1. If that coordinate, you say that coordinate's going to be your one coordinate, that means that p will be our two. So x2 and y2. I would definitely label. Um, I think labeling creates a... Um, it makes your work more organized, and that way you know exactly what you're plugging in where. So again, I just said what you're plugging in where because all you're doing now is plugging in numbers. So x1 goes in the x1 position. So we have 6 plus our x2 
which is zero, all of that over two. And then we also have our y1 plus our y2, all of that over two. So this is gonna end up being our coordinate. So we can say six plus zero is six over two, and zero plus four is four over two. This can definitely be simplified, so we would want you to simplify it here. Six over two is just three, and four over two is just two. So our midpoint is three comma two, which is actually where I put my point, surprisingly. Okay, number three. So it says find the midpoint of each segment. Um, so here we're just putting this midpoint formula to use, okay? Um, again, I'm going to label and say, well, this is x1, y1. This is x2, y2. Now, if I labeled my points like this, that's perfectly fine. If you switched these and made um, a, x2, y2, and b, x1, y1, that is perfectly fine. You will still get the same answer. As long as you're staying consistent, as long as if this is x1, this has to be y1. It can't be y2. So I'm going to say, well, x1 plus x2, so x1 plus x2, all of that over 2. Then we have y1 plus y2, all of that over 2. So I can say, well, 2 plus a negative 5 is actually negative 3 over 2. 3 plus 11 is 14 over 2. Okay, this can also be simplified. Negative 3 halves does not reduce any further, so I'm just going to leave that as negative 3 halves. Um, but 14 over 2 does reduce to 7. So this right here is going to be my midpoint. Negative 3 halves comma 7. Okay. Then we have CD. So, I am going to go ahead again and label x1, y1, x2, y2, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that into my formula as well. So, my formula is x1 plus x2, so my x1 is 6, x2 is 10, divided by 2. Then I have my y1 plus y2 over 2. And then we can say, well, 6 plus 10 is 16 over 2. And negative 11 plus 16 is 5 over 2. Okay. Now, again, if I can simplify, I want to. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. And then I also have 5 over 2. That does not... Um, reduce any further. Okay, so my midpoint would be 8 comma 5 halves. Okay, so part C, guys, um, C, it requires a little bit of work. So we're going to be using the midpoint formula, and we're also going to be using um, the distance formula. So it says M is the midpoint of AB. I'm going to go ahead and draw this out. If M is the midpoint, that means M is in the middle. And it says it's the midpoint of AB. So I'm going to go ahead and label those. A is located at negative 2, negative 4. B is located at 4, negative 12. 
Okay, and it wants to know what the length of MA is. So we want to know that length. Well, here's the problem. We can't find the distance between M to A because we don't have the coordinate M. But since we know that M is our midpoint, we can go ahead and find that coordinate by using A and B. Okay, so I'm going to label negative 2 as x1 and y1 for negative 4, and then 4 as x2, negative 12 as y2. And then I can go ahead and find that m coordinate. So if I do that, I'm going to plug that into my midpoint formula, and I'm going to say, well, negative 2. negative 2 plus 4, all of that over 2, and negative 4 minus, I'm sorry, plus a negative, which is going to be minus 12 over 2. Okay. Um... So then we can say, well, negative 2 plus 4, that's 2 over 2. And negative 4 plus a negative 12. So really that's like saying negative 4 minus 12. That's going to be negative 16 over 2. If I reduce these, I end up with 1 comma negative 8. Okay. So I've now found my midpoint, which is point M at 1, negative 8. Now it says, well, what is the length of MA? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change colors here. And it wants to know what that length is. So I can use the distance formula in order to find that. And the distance formula... is x2 minus x1, all of that squared, plus y2 minus y1, that quantity squared. Okay, so I need to use a and m to find my ma, my the length of ma. So I'm going to go ahead and write those coordinates out. I have a is negative 2, negative 4. And I found M, which is 1, negative 8. Okay, so again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to label. So I'm going to say X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And I'm going to go ahead and plug those in. That's all you have to do is plug them into your equation. So my X2 is 1 minus my x1, which is a negative 2, plus y2, which is negative 8, minus my y1, which is negative 4. Now, if we think back a little bit, probably to last year and middle school and possibly even um, grade school, two negatives end up making a positive. So really, this is like adding. I'm just going to draw on that plus sign here. Okay. Over here, it's going to do the same thing. Two negatives are going to make that positive. Okay. So I can say, well, one plus two, that's three squared. And then I have negative eight plus a four, which is negative four squared. Three squared gives me nine. Negative 4, that quantity squared, gives me 16. If I add 9 and 16, I get 25. So the square root of 25 is 5 or negative 5. Technically, it's plus or minus 5 because I'm taking the square root. But since we are talking about a length, we can't have a negative length. You can't be negative feet tall. Um, so we are just going to use the positive. So we're going to say, I'm sorry, not x. We're going to say that 
segment MA is equal to five units. Okay, and we can, this little um, fill in the bubbles, um, that is like what you're gonna see on SAT. So you would just wanna fill in five and put that five up at the top as well. And that is page 15.